In this video, we're going to learn how to prepare our final financial statement, the balance sheet. Remembering that we've learned how to prepare an income statement, which was that summary of revenues minus expenses to calculate our net income. In this case, our company's net income was $59,000. And also that we've learned how to prepare a statement of retained earnings, which summarizes how the company's earnings retained earnings, I should say, rise and fall as a result of net income or net losses and dividends. Uh, the final statement, again, is the balance sheet. And what the balance sheet does, and if I've already written it here, is it summarizes this relationship very nicely. It summarizes the relationship of assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. So on one side of the balance sheet we're going to list the assets, on the other we're going to list the liabilities and the shareholders equity and you're going to see that assets do indeed equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. So let's go ahead and prepare a balance sheet. As always we're going to start with the title. The title of this balance sheet is the name of the company, Fred's tailoring service the name of the financial statement this is a balance sheet and the date and for the income statement and for the statement of retained earnings we said for the year ended and then the date with the balance sheet we're going to say as at and then we're going to give our date I'll explain why the balance sheets a little bit different uh, and I'll do it in the next video or maybe the video after. Right now we're going to be worried about preparing the balance sheet and it's important to know that it is different. Uh, if your instructor is anything like me, they'll take away marks if you give this title wrong. Titles matter, formats matter, the way the, the financial statements look matter. Okay, so as we said, this is the summary of assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. So the way I lay it out is a little bit different from most instructors in most textbooks. I make the students list all the assets out on the left-hand side of the balance sheet, all the liabilities, and shareholders' equity accounts are going to go on the right. Sorry about my penmanship. Okay, so let's start with our assets. I'm going to go back to the original question, and I've actually gone to the liberty of highlighting the assets in red. So you can see accounts receivable, computers, cash, sewing machines are all of our assets as we identified way back a couple of videos ago. So, uh, when we're writing out our assets, the order matters, and the fact that we've classified them as current or long term also matters. We're preparing what's called a classified balance sheet, and that means we're going to distinguish between current assets and the long term, or, or in this case, their capital assets. So let's list out our current assets, and then we'll list out our capital assets. But it's not just enough to list them in any random order. We have to list our assets and our liabilities in order of liquidity, and that means what's most likely to be used up first or in the case of liabilities which bill is going to be paid the soonest so when I look at my assets cash always comes first cash is absolutely the most liquid of assets then we've got accounts receivable computers and sewing machines uh, next would absolutely be accounts receivable we expect to collect all of our receivables in 30 days maybe 60 or 90 computers last more than that so do sewing machines so accounts receivables next so we'll go cash then accounts receivable and then we've got computers versus sewing machines this is a bit of you know guesswork but you know if I buy a laptop or a new computer two three maybe four years my mom's got a sewing machine from the 1960s so I think a sewing machine's gonna outlast a computer that's guesswork on my part but let's go with it so I'm gonna list them in this order cash then accounts receivable and those are my current assets my computers and showing sewing machines in that order and those are going to be called capital assets uh, the reason we call them capital is because they're depreciable assets and we'll, we'll talk all about that later on in the course for now let's just stick with those classifications so under assets we have current assets 
and we've got under that cash and accounts receivable that should be lowercase let me just redo that and our cash was 133 and our accounts receivable was 2 so let's fill that in cash was 133 thousand dollars accounts receivable is two thousand dollars so 133 plus 2 is 135 you'll notice here and again your instructor might be a little different about how they want you to format things but I would get my class to sort of list things on the left and total on the right just as we did in the income statement if I only had one current asset I would write it on the right hand side so you can see that there's kind of two columns here so our total current assets and a lot of times instructors don't even get you to write this I do but again this is very stylistic uh, you know there's there's different options here 133 plus 2 is 135 that's our total current assets we also said we have capital assets oops and first is our computer and next is going to be our sewing machine so our computer was worth uh, 4,000 and our sewing machines 15 oops that was computers with an S too you always want to be consistent with what's given in the question so our computers were 4 and our sewing machines 15 4 plus 15 is 19 and that's our total capital assets so our grand total for assets 135 plus 19 our grand total is hundred and fifty four thousand dollars that's our total assets and we're uh, on track I shouldn't be capitalizing any of these and I'm sorry I am it's a bad habit but these should all be lowercase if we want to get uh, technical here this uh, the first letter of the line is is capital then after that everything else is lowercase okay so we've summarized our assets because we got to the bottom line of total assets we underline twice now moving over to liabilities uh, we've got a current liability and we've got two current liabilities we've got no long-term liabilities I'll make those green uh, here they are in kind of a greenish color there so again I know it's a bit of a rainbow I, I think probably I can do without any color from now on we've got short-term notes payable and we've got accounts payable a bit of guesswork here generally speaking accounts payable comes first if we have any like bank demand loans they might come even before that but accounts payable is often going to be the first current liability then we'll go with short-term notes payable again order matters and that's order of liquidity so let's go under our liabilities and we'll have our current liabilities now I better be careful how I write because I want to fit it all in here and we have uh, accounts payable and we have I'm gonna abbreviate you probably shouldn't be abbreviating but I'm just worried about space so accounts payable were 1,000 short-term notes payable were three so we've got accounts payable of 1,000 short-term notes payable of three for a total there of four I'm squeezing quite tight here so our total liabilities 
Now, interestingly, this is not just our total current liabilities, it's our total liabilities overall. So I don't have to write total current and total liabilities. If, if the titles are redundant, just write the main one. And in this case, our total liabilities are $4,000. On to shareholders' equity, and then we'll, we'll be done here. And under shareholders' equity, we just have two accounts to list. We have common shares, and we have retained earnings. Our company's common shares are right there. They're the only thing I haven't highlighted so far. They're 30 grand. Let's fill that in. And our company's retained earnings, when I look on here, it says retained earnings March 1st, 104,000. I don't want to use that. I want retained earnings as at February 28th, my fiscal year end. Where am I going to find that? On my statement of retained earnings, the statement we just prepared a moment ago, you can see the retained earnings there at the bottom are $120,000. Let's fill that number in, and then we're all set. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit more real estate here. My total shareholders equity, I'm going to abbreviate that as SE for space purposes here, 30 plus 120 is $150,000. And now I have a grand total, and it's going to be total liabilities and shareholders equity. Again, I know my penmanship leaves a lot to be desired, but you can see the total liabilities there are four. The total shareholders equity is 150. Four plus 150 is 154 double underline it as it's a bottom line now again dollar signs generally speaking top of every column bottom line of every financial statement there's uh, some other rules here um, uh, generally uh, under the new heading of capital assets we'll have to have a dollar sign as well um, but I would say rule of thumb, top of any column, bottom line of any financial statement, and you'll be uh, certainly on the right track. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Here's why I love accounting. Here's why accounting is the best subject you'll ever have. We went through this whole big problem. We prepared an income statement, a statement of retained earnings, and a balance sheet. And at the end of it, we know we must have done a pretty good job because our balance sheet balances. You know, I write an English essay, and I write an essay for 20 pages, and I think I've done a brilliant job. You know what? It, it, the instructor might think it was terrible. At the end of the balance sheet, if it balances and it balances to the correct number, your instructor is going to mark it right. You're going to get most of the marks, if not all of the marks. So the sun is shining. The birds are singing. We should be feeling very good about ourselves right now. Our balance sheet balances. We're going to talk more about some of the details of each of the financial statements and a bit of analysis in the next video.